Yes, big man. What's going on, bro? You good? Good. Yeah, man. All oh, blessed, man. How's life in lockdown? You know what? It's not too bad, you know. Yeah. I think um, you get more time to spend with the kids, you know. So I yeah. can't really complain. Yeah, oh, getting right. a lot more time. Stuff, so. No, nah, good. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you taking the time anyway. Like, yeah. you're one club man, which is quite rare in this kind of modern day. So kind of want to get your perspective on your time at Villa. Kind of like yeah. the high goals and just kind of a bit of insight kind of into a day-to-day -day life of a professional footballer. Really. That's yeah, right. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, so firstly, like Birmingham born, bred, like never left, um, as a Londoner, like I've never been there. So kind of, <laughs> what was it like, um, growing up there and kind of like your earliest memories? Yeah, it was all right. You know, like I lived with, um, my two brothers and two sisters. So, um, where I was brought up was like five, 10 minutes away from, um, Villa, Gr Villa Park. Okay. So, um. Yeah, so I was close to the stadium, you know, where I was brought up and stuff. So, um, yeah, it was fine. You know, I can't complain. You know, um, at that time of growing up, living with my two brothers and two sisters, it was just normal, you know. You know, the, the normal struggles. You know what I mean? The normal struggles of, like, most families, um, especially yeah. in them days of, like, for me and my, my two brothers especially, um, just one man Wembley in the garden, you know, just yeah. breaking fences, jumping over yeah. the fence to get the ball. Ruining the neighbours' plants, you know. <laughs> so really, it was just constantly football from an um, early age. And um, kind of like, Jules grew up a Villa fan then? Growing up from the stadium, I imagine you would. Because yeah. we are so close to the stadium, you know, it was always um, Aston Villa. Uh, but, oh. but you know what, I say this um, to quite a few people. I also followed Arsenal. I had two teams. Okay. So basically, Villa... Villa was my team because they were a local team, you know, I supported them. But yeah, yeah. because Arsenal was so good when I was growing up, it was like, you know, I'm, I want to I wanna watch Arsenal on match of the day. I want to watch, you know what I mean? Watch yeah. like Henri, that, that era of Henri, Lundberg, Perez, Bergkamp. Like, yeah. I was obsessed with them. No, 100%. I'm right. a Spurs fan. And listen, I've got to say, that Arsenal yeah. team was, was a legendary team. I can't even lie. Um, did, you, did you look up to anyone in that Arsenal team or kind of build your game yeah. around them? Kind of growing Just, up? Obsessed with Thierry Henry. You know, yeah. I can't put my game around him because, like, no one could build the game around Thierry Henry, you know. But just the way he used to always play on the left-hand side of the pitch, you know, I tried to, like, um, do that in my game. Of, um, game. of um, always prefer to be on the left. I remember um, some managers wanted me to play on the right wing and I'd be like, please, just let me play on the left. You know, just yeah. getting in and, like, try that <laughs> bend. Yeah, so... um. Henri and um, Perez, I was obsessed with Henri and Perez. All during my like childhood and watching them was like, and even to play against to play against Henri and Perez, yeah. and play with Perez was like a dream come true, you know. Yeah, he moved to Villa in his late years, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was amazing. No, that was sounds good. Um, what was kind of like your entry point then, like growing up, getting into football? You know what? My, my dad just said that like, just from the age of like. Walking age, me, me and my two brothers. Cause there's only a year, two years between all three of us, me and my two brothers. So imagine a three-year-old, a four-year-old, and a five-year-old in a back garden, or a seven-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old. You know, like just constantly football, obsessed with football, breaking yeah. fences upstairs. You know, morning till night in the six-week holidays, playing football. You know, there was nothing to be allowed to do apart from play football or do your education. You know, we couldn't watch yeah. TV unless it was... So we could only watch, like, Channel 4 football, Italian football on a Sunday. Yeah. And oh, match of the day. Yeah. We couldn't watch any films. We couldn't play PlayStation. My okay. dad would take the place my brother used to buy and then um, throw it away. He was so strict in, like, you're going to be a footballer or you're going to be, like, a doctor or a scientist. You know, like, you're going to get a good career in education. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. because he loved so much, you know, he said he played um, a lot when he was a kid as well. He just wanted one of his, his sons to make it, you know, and I think the sacrifices that he made um, literally made me make it. It was down to him, really. No, yeah, so from like, from, like, walking age, just sprinting football, you know, it was like one or the other. How important is that, like, having someone like that pushing you from a young age, like, keeping you grounded and disciplined as well? massive like I'm like that with my kids now like my 11 year old 
he has to do a three kilometer run every morning at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Every, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've just been that in, in like, at first he didn't want to do it, but then he's got into it of like, I'm trying to benefit him and get yeah. his mind, mind on like, what you do now is what's going to make you when you're older. Don't wait till you finish school and think, what am I going to do? That's what my dad done with me and my um, brothers and sisters was what you do now. Childhood isn't for like enjoyment. Yeah. Childhood is to make yourself better and make yourself get a good job or a good career. So when you're older, you can enjoy. Does that make sense? Yeah. So nice. like some people enjoy and then work to work, work to work hard when they're older. But he had that mindset into us. And I think it was um, just a typical Nigerian mindset, if I'm honest. I mean, I know a lot. <laughs> Nigerian players and then um, they say the same, you know, that that was so strict with like punishments were strict. I mean, some of the beatings I got, like my dad would be in bloody prison for the next 50 years. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I love him for it. Do you know what I mean? Like I needed it. I needed that discipline of like, if you're going to mess about at school, well, yeah. when you get, you know what's coming. So you wouldn't mess about at school. No, I make and, and, and it's like, it keeps you grounded. And it's one of them ones as well. Like, Growing up as well, like, what age did you start playing for Villa? So I went um, at 12, 13, I signed for Villa. So yeah. at 12, 13, it's kind of like going onwards, even like at school years, you can kind of get lost in and distracted from football and things like that. So do you hey, think so it kind of helped keep you grounded there then? A thousand percent. So easy for like, you know, everyone was leaving school and going into town and, you know, going to hang about at the chip shop or at the, the, the local corner shop. and yeah play football and hang around outside my house, literally yeah. like was this wall shaped like the size of a goal, but we weren't allowed. It was like go in the garden. You're not going to hang around around the shop. You've got to be back from school within like half an hour of you finish, you know, just strict and kind of bang on it. But you knew what you could not do. You know what I mean? You, you knew that like, if your behavior was bad in school, when you get home, you're getting it. So like yeah. the fear, of the beating would make you not misbehave. No, Do you know what I mean? And no, even with football and like, it was like, you're going to be a footballer or you're going to be good at education. You choose. Simple as that. Okay. Do you know what I mean? No, I hear you. I hear you. Um, and then kind of, how did you get signed by Villa? So at the time, um, I, was, I, was, I was banging in a lot of goals for um, my Sunday league team. It was called um, oh. Great Ball Falcons. Okay. So like, them days, I don't know what it's like now, but if you were like 10, 11, 12 and rapid, you know what I mean? You're scoring three, four, five goals a game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you're that much quicker than um, any defender. So that's what I was doing. I was quite raw, but just I was so quick. I was running through one on one like, times a, day, a game and scoring. Yeah. You know I, mean? um, I actually didn't get scouted from there. I got scouted from um, my local district. So basically, the best oh. players all in that area played yeah. for a district team okay and they played every Saturday morning so I was there for like the first two games and then um, Villa scouted me from there but at that time when Villa scouted me Wolves scouted me as well oh okay. so um did you almost end up there time. did you almost no end up because it was just further you know like it was further away I was a Villa fan yeah Villa were a much bigger club you know, like, for me, it was like, yeah, hopefully Villa like, take me. Were they? They again. Wolves weren't as big as as they are now at that time. Uh, but then um, I played the first game for Villa in a trial game for, like, I think it was the under-13s. Yeah. And it was against uh, Drew Alexander, and I scored a hat-trick. So, like, you know, just straight away, the academy director was like, we want to sign you straight away. And I was like, yeah, yeah. heard what I mean. So straight into the academy at like thirteen, and and was that pace like something you was just like had from young, or was it like something your dad drilled into you in the back that, garden? That's just like a like born with it. My Genetic. dad's like, at sports days at primary school, I'd run, and then like I'd stop, turn around to see where everyone else is, and then like run again. I like, said that like speed was just like mad. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that was just something. I was just brought up with so like once I started playing for a proper team you know yeah. like everyone was just oh like this skinny sprinter just like running past every defender and I think that carried on throughout the team as well 
Okay. And then, yeah, so I was going to say, yeah, in Villa, did that, was it the same then, where you were just leaving everyone and just scoring goals? Yeah, I broke um, I broke Darius Vassell's record in the um, in the youth team. So, like, it was just the same. And, like, because you're at Villa, you're playing with better players than you would have at Sunday League, so you're getting better service. Yeah. And I was playing with a guy called Trey Gardner. And, oh. like, he literally, he literally get the ball. He was so good at, like, he's, he's like, through balls, get the ball. Dink it over the top, little lofted through ball, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like straight in goal, straight away in goal, and like just breaking them um, the, the records for like U team goals. And it was just not that it was easy, but my pace just like boosted. You know, like, it was like because like defenders, so you're just going to start scoring goals, aren't you? At that level. Yeah. I think even games with my son, like you see the other team with a rapid player. It's game over. It's different. You know what I mean? Like, games of like 10 11, it's 9v9. Like, the, the, if you've got a quick player against you, it's like the team's won, basically. Yeah. And um, kind of when you, when you moved on from, not moved on from Villa, but after the youth team, you kind of went on loan. And that was kind of like your first experience of like men's football. What was that like? You know what? I hated it. Yeah. Hated it. Your first time leaving Birmingham as well, wasn't it? I. 18, nearly 19 year old who's like lived, do you know what I mean? Lived at home, moved into his own house at 18. That yeah. like I moved into my 18. Um, and then you're getting told you're going to like, do you know what I mean? I think it was Watford first. And I was like staying at the Ramada Jarvis Hotel in Watford, I was staying. Okay. And like, I was just like, I don't know, you're around like the first team players, do you know what I mean? That's some big the first, Yeah. Being, Trevor Benjamin, I mean, Ashley Young was there as well. Okay. I don't know, it just didn't work for me. I think, like, getting used to the stadium with, like, 10, 15,000 people in, I couldn't get yeah, used yeah. to it. You know, I really struggled on my loans. And, like, I remember, like, after Watford, I come back, I went on loan to Sheffield Wednesday, and um, I stayed with an amazing family in the sort of digs. But I just hated football. I, was, I don't know, I just, like, I couldn't <laughs> make that step to, like, yeah, you know what I mean, men's football. You know, you're getting bullied. <laughs> like, yeah, and I, I ended up in the reserves at Sheffield Wednesday. So you know, like that's embarrassing. Really. You're going on loan, and you you meant to go and get some minutes, and you end up in the reserves. So I just remember, like, the um, reserve team manager hammering me. Do you know what I mean? He's probably thinking yeah. like, this big time <laughs> a compiler. He's like, <laughs> he's like in the reserves now. But like after I left there, I was just like, wow, I hate football. Like I didn't want to play anymore. Okay, so then how do you go from like on loan to Sheffield Reserves to getting a goal on your debut against Charlton? Was it even no? Nah, it was my debut against um, Everton. Oh, okay, yeah, but, Everton. yeah. Goal them um, Charlton, but the the funny thing about that that people don't know is that it was not out of choice for the manager. So basically, okay. I'm going, I've gone into the reserves at Villa, and um, there was an injury crisis at Villa, so like. I think there was only Luke Moore available. And you played 4-4-2 back then, didn't you? So, I think, yeah, Finn or Angel or someone else was, like, injured and ill. So, basically, O'Leary's come down to the reserves, basically, to the reserve team manager and probably said to him, like, what's the best you've got? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, what's the best yeah, you've nah. got available? So, I remember training for, like, three days with the first team. And then um, he told me I was starting. So, like, the day before, I was like, whoa, I'm starting. Do you know what I mean? I've gone on loan, not done nothing, not scored mm -hmm. in two loans. Yeah. And then, um, bang, I'm, I'm in. And what's funny is that the game, we got battered. But that was a good yeah. Everton team back then, You know what I mean? Was, yeah. They, and, they like, we're getting like top four. Yeah, they were, they were a good team, mate. And um, we're getting battered. I just remember, like, Lee Hendry putting me through with a little through ball. I just tried to shoot across goal, you know. I think it was my first shot of the game, just to get anything on it. And I still think to so today, when I look back at the goal, Richard Wright has done me a favour because, <laughs> you know what I mean? If you look back, I saved it and like, obviously saved it, went yeah. in. Yeah, but that's what I say. If I never scored in that game, the other strikers would have come back in. I would have been back in the reserves. Yeah. But when you're a nine year old and you scored on your debut, you can't be ignored, you know, the yeah. press, yeah, the, the man. The team. And, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, nah, I hear you 100%. And then, like, David O'Leary, what was your relationship like with him? Did you have one? Because it wasn't long after he left. 
I don't think anyone had one with him, you know. Like he was, um, he was mad. He was like, he he just didn't like. I don't know. He'd walk back down the corridor and he'd like look up at the air while you're walking past him. Yeah. You know one of them managers. Like, just like, take no notice. I, like yeah, just, I'm not talking to any player. I'll see you on the training yeah. pitch. A lot of players didn't like him, and even players that I spoke to that played with him at Leeds say the same. Like he had that like arrogant approach, you know. Yeah. So I didn't have a relationship with him, not one bit. So then no. Martin O'Neill coming in in the summer then must have been like a breath of fresh air because you two seemed like you got along really well. And did you kind of see a clearer path to the first team when he came in? You know what? He, he um, I think when he come in, he probably thought to himself, where, let me see where the young players are at. You know, like, all the managers are like more like one experience. He was the first one to like, want young players, young, fresh players. So he's probably seen me um, pre-season, this quick, young, raw talent. Yeah. Then we just get on him and, I mean, start playing him. He started playing me right wing, which I hated, you know, like a winger. Do you know what I mean? But because yeah, I was yeah. quick and Angel was still there. Yeah, he was just like, you're playing right wing. But I loved him straight away. He's like, just man management, you know? You know, like, he had that father figure about him as well. And, like, from the day one, I just loved working under him. Yeah. And, like, did you feel like he was the one that got the best out of you? Kind of, like, out of all your managers? Thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you see, you see what was good about him was that, like, I probably could have got away with more with him. You know, like, when someone's like your father, you like your dad, yeah. you know, like, yeah. you, you get away with more. You know what I mean? Like, if you have, a, you have three bad games, he's not dropping you. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Where all the money don't score in two, you're out. No, if I do 10 games, I'm playing the next game. You know when he's got that, like, like trust in you and he's not just going to drop you when the, um, the going gets tough, he'll stick with you through the tough time because he knows what you can do and, like, um, you'll come good. So that was the main thing for him was, like, his man management. And, and you just said there, like, the trust he had because when you came in, like, that when he came in that season, I think start of the year you had Barris who just came in from Liverpool. Kevin Phillips, Darius Vassell, who, as you said, has got youth records, and Luke Moore from the academy. Like, so you're competing for spots already, but then for him yeah. to get that trust is kind of big. Yeah, and I think he, he when he first came in, he had um, and his his formation was four three three, so it sort of suited me. As like there weren't many right wingers there at the time, and left wingers, so it was like Luke on the left, Angel, me on the right. So the formation suited me. You know, he just wanted speed in his team. Yeah, I think. Um, did, did you feel like at that time? Yeah, did you feel like playing out wide like helped your game though? Like, because nowadays you see a lot of that kind of like when young forwards break through, rather than throwing them straight up front, they tend to stick them out wide for a little bit to just kind of get the traits of their game. You've seen that with like Rashford and Greenwood. Hundred yeah. percent. I think it was more as well about because I was so young, fit, energetic, hungry. He knew he could play me on the right because he knew I'd follow Ashley Cole for ninety-five yeah. minutes. You know what I mean? He knew that, like, I had the energy to sprint up and down and rather than play someone who might be a bit older who can't yeah. um, have the left. Down. So, um, yeah, he was. He, he just wanted to, like, have a young team with a little bit of experience as well. And playing wing definitely helped my game because at times I'll play right wing, then left wing, then centre forward. You know, it was helping me play different positions. Yeah. And I think in that January... I think John Carew joined, didn't he? And what was yeah. your relationship like with him? Because you two seemed like on the pitch, you like had a link up, but like on the pitch, off the pitch, what was that relationship like? Yeah, John was good. Like, well, like when John came, it was more. I was in awe of him. You know, this is the guy that's banging in goals at like Valencia. You know, like he's just the player that I've probably been watching for the last three, four years, you know, in Champions League games. And when he came, he suited my play because. He helped me to come into the centre. Marty went to a four four two. Yeah, it was basically big, big man, small man. You know what I mean? I, I was a lot smaller then, more skinny. He was the big bully, bully two defenders, flick the ball on for me to run through yeah. my speed. You know, and um, yeah, he suited me a lot. And even on the off the field, you know, we'd um, we'd get a few parties. Um, you know, John was a party boy as well, like I was. So I think we had that relationship. Um, <laughs> On the on the field and off it, 
Nah, that's good. That's good to hear. Because I was because I was going to ask that as well. It's like when when youngsters break through into like a first team where you've got like senior experience, bro. Do they kind of give you a hard time where you've kind of got earned their respect, or is it a thing where oh. like you? Because you come. From, that's that's like an era where the youth players are still kind of cleaning boots and things like that. So just speak hey, on that. I remember my first um, my first season. It was like maybe my first few months. I remember. You remember Gavin McCann, the midfielder. Yeah, centre mid. Yeah, I remember him saying to me, oh, "You're just having a lucky season, man. You're just having a lucky season." Yeah. You know, like properly, like you know, like that old school, like no right to bring me. You know what I mean? Just like no need for it either. Like just like it was just like you're having a good, you're having a lucky season, man. Like I was just like, whoa, that's how like some of the senior pros are like. But that yeah. was the generation that we were used to. You know, when you go in the first team, you're like. You're on the back. You're on the like front of the coach, not even looking back at the back of the coach. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. In them nowadays, the young players will come to the back of the coach and sit at the the prime location. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> for <laughs> real, for real. Do you know what I mean? It's it's all changed, and I think football changed as well. You know, like there's no more cleaning boots. That. Like we had to clean boots, polish the boots with shoe polish. Change the Lucas Aid bottles. Do you know what I mean? Wash them. Do the balls. Before we started our training, we done like an hour yeah. of slavery. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like that was what you were used to. It's basically you come into work and then like once you've done your work, you can play football then. But that yeah. was what we were used to. And, you know, it was just normal back then. You almost got earned the right to play, innit? Yeah, hundred percent. And like I don't know, you just you were just in awe of the first team players. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. Him leaving at like twelve thirty, and you're like, oh, I wish that was me leaving at like half twelve. Yeah. I mean, we started. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, yeah, back then it was just different times to now. It's a lot different. No, definitely. And like, um, off the back of that season's performances, though, because you did quite well. I think you hit double figures that year. But the very next year, I think they gave you a new four-year contract, yeah. and that must have been massive for you coming off. Like, you had a two-year deal before that, but. What did that kind of like first paycheck feel like and that big bump in wages almost like the first time that money dropped in your account? What was the what was your headspace like? You know what? Like at that age it was more because I'd been earning like half decent money, like, you know what I mean, from my, my first season. You know what okay. I mean? Because I, I moved out at the age of eighteen with okay. my first pro contract. Because my dad was that strict, I was out, mate. Any yeah. chance to put down in the house, I was gone. You know, it was just some freedom. Yeah. But um, once that like new contract come that year, it was more. I remember Martin O'Neill saying to me and my agent, "You're not going to get the massive money straight away. You've had a great year, but you got you're not going to get it. You got you can have a new year, new new deal every year, but mm -hmm. you're going to get the bit by bit. We're not going to give you it straight away. But with that contract, I just went and bought a new house. Do you know what I mean? I I, I was in a house already. I'll just use my sign on fee to put it down as a deposit on a house and I was into like a bigger house in a better area. Oh, that's wicked. Um what would you say like it from your career would be like your best investment that you've made? Just speaking on the house there or like and then on the flip side, kind of what your worst investment you think? Um I think like the the best investments would just been houses, you know, um I'd, I'd always always had the advice as a kid um, when I first turned pro just to buy houses, like just keep buying houses whenever you can afford, get another house, get another house because houses only go up in price. And um, yeah. that'll be what um, my best investment was. And the worst, um, you know what? I think like being a party boy, I think um, okay. the amount of holidays to Vegas, Miami, um, trips to London, out in Birmingham, the amount of money I've yeah. wasted, do you know what I mean? I'm partying would be like you'd be terrifying if you if you knew how much. But cars as well, wasting money on cars. But it's part of being a footballer. Sometimes you know you're young, you're not used to the money, you want yeah. to enjoy yourself. And I always had a good relationship with my agent, who was um, an ex accountant. So he from day one at seventeen, he was in charge of everything. So he would always tell me what I'm okay to spend and what you're yeah. saving. Does that make so there's always, yeah. yeah, there's always that I couldn't touch. If that was eighty percent, I can't touch, and twenty percent, go and enjoy yourself. If that's going to get a Lamborghini, a Bentley, if that's going to like 
Harvey Nichols, Selfies and buying whatever clothes you want or um, holidays in crazy holidays in Vegas because you've earned it. You've worked hard during the season. No. You know, as long as you pay the right amount, go and enjoy yourself. So you just said there as well, and like you bought cars. What was the most expensive car you bought at that time? Um, I bought a, <laughs> at that time or all through my career. All throughout your career, actually. What was probably the most expensive one? Go on. So I think it was 2013. I got a Lamborghini Aventador. Okay. But nice. You still got that? Got... Nah, nah, nah. But when I got it, I actually like put another car in as a deposit. And then I was paying okay. like thousands of pounds a month. But you're losing the money every month. Does that make sense? Because the car like depreciates so much. You're losing like two and a half, three thousand pounds a month. That you're paying for the car, you're losing it. But yeah. fine, when you're earning this money, you know you you just think to yourself, you know, oh, I want that car. I love cars. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, after after six months, I was like, you can't drive it. The weather. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. raining. You're gonna like like you off. So up on got you. Got rid of. Yeah, so I got rid of that, and then I just stuck to like um, Range Rovers after that, really, because um, the sports cars. I don't think. England's the country for sports cars. A bit dangerous, isn't it? Yeah. The roads are way too tight as well. But you just said yeah, there, the super you had an agent who was an ex-accountant kind of helping you with your finances. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, last conversation we had with Andre Gray, he was saying kind of like, he'd only really manage his finances once he got to the Premier League. Like, is that something um, footballers generally struggle with? Like, ha handling their finances and handling big money like that at a young age? And how many like, footballers live in check to check almost? Yeah, hundred percent. A lot, of, a lot of footballers will, but that's why more footballers need the sort of agent I've got because they need someone to help them. I think sometimes you like you might have your parents, but then you know what it's like when you're eighteen. You're like, um, Dad, stop telling me what to do with my money. Do you know what I mean? Okay. You, you, you're a big man, aren't you? You think you are anyway. Of like, you know what? You're not telling me what to do with my money. So that was me. It was more like. But then, because I had that great agent who was not just an agent that would turn up at Man United away, he was yeah. like an agent which every month he'd come and visit me and go through what I need to pay for bills, what I need to save, what I'm allowed to spend. You know what I mean? And that that's a big thing, I think, is like having someone like that. I mean, players are financial advisors, but sometimes they're in it for themselves. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If they can invest your money and make a 10% profit themselves, 100%. they're going to do that on not going to yeah. have your best interest. But it's a, it's a big thing, though, because easily, you know, you, you know what it's like. If you're 18, 19, and you're getting this big money in your bank, you're going to want to go to um, the club and pop bottles. Do you know what I mean? You want to go and have, like, champagne yeah. shows. You want, like, free cars on the drive. You want to have the best clothes. You want to have the best jewellery. And if you haven't got that person to help you, then you're in trouble and... You never know when the next contract's going to come. You might sign one at 19, but it might be your last one. Do you know what I mean? So that's, that's a scary thing. No, that, no and, and I agree with that 100%. Like, managing your money, I think, is probably one of the most key things. And I think well, there's been countless stories kind of like where players have always struggled with it. But did you also have, like, um, growing up, obviously, people grow up with their friends and things like that. Did you have people, like, depending on you that you needed to support? That were kind of like, you almost felt the pressure of that, in a sense. Yeah, I think, I think that definitely was not, not from friends, you know, but like definitely from family. But it was a pressure that like you don't mind because, you know, you've all come through the struggle together. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you got like two close brothers, two close sisters, stepmom, dad. You've come through through this struggle together. Do you know what I mean? Of like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like living off like. Do you know what I mean? Just living by your means, you know what I mean? Like, just struggling through life. So, if I make it, everyone makes it. Do you know what I mean? You can't, you're not going to, like, make it and then, like, not help your family out. Yeah. Um, agent said to me, he says that, like, you're the most generous out of any of my players I've ever had. Yeah. You know what I mean? With family, it was just like, yeah, dad, you can have that, you can have that. Brought my dad a house um, when I was 20. Do you oh, know what yeah. I mean? That's like, it. Really nice. Um, got him a Mercedes um, Jeep, changed that every two years. Got my mom this Jeep. Got my pay for my sister's wedding. Bought my brother a flat. Bought my older brother. A car. Do you know, like just like constantly helping him. But you don't mind because 
that's what family's about, isn't it? You know, when and you it, makes it, everyone makes it. And it's kind of why you've built that career to that point. They've been kind of the people giving you the foundation to support that. So it's not right you kind of pay them back, I guess. Garden with me then. How do I know I would have had the, the, the time to develop? You know, my dad used to take me to like training, you know, he'd, he'd finish like a, a like eight or five shift, not make them any money in the work that he did and then have to drive me all the way to training. Do you know what I mean? And I, I'm a father, I'm a dad myself. Yeah, I know yeah. that feeling. That it's training, okay. Do you know what I mean? Sunday yeah. morning, all the time. So for him to make them sacrifices for me and then the sacrifices he made for us as a kid, like bringing us up on um, on his own for a little bit before my stepmom come. It's normal, isn't it? You're going to give him whatever he wants. And that's Literally. what he's had um, for the last 14, 15 years. He's had anything he wanted. No, nah, that's good, man. That's good to hear. And one thing I've always wanted to ask as well is like, a lot of times in the papers and media and things like that, you see reported like footballers are earning, I don't know, 300K or 150K, 75K, whatever it may be. But is it ever actually that number that they're reporting or is it something that's kind of more broken down incentive based, whether it be signing on fees, goal bonuses, appearance fees? How, how are kind of like Premier League contracts broken down? Well, I think I think sometimes when people like put them out there, how do they know? Do you know what I mean? Like a play, only a player and his agent are gonna know the contract. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like mail online. Not... Yeah. They're just making up figures, but yeah, it is in sense. Like you, you do have like maybe eighty percent of your wage up front, ten percent as a sign-on fee. So you get it like um, every July. Then mm -hmm. you might have like a amount of it is an appearance fee. Do you know what I mean? You don't get it all at once. But it depends who you are, doesn't it? I'm sure yeah. Lionel Messi gets one up front. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it Bye. depends what position you are when you like negotiate, isn't it? But for me as a young player, it was like play 40 games, 40 starts. You can have um, negotiations for a new deal. So that was and always how Martin only looked at my deals. And Craig Gardner was the same. was like, you're not going to get a four-year deal on crazy money. You're going to get a three-year deal, but after a year, you'll be back in here. And that's what yeah. happened. Um, I'll, yeah. You know what I mean, every game. And, like, when you're 19, 20, what do you want to do? Yeah, you want to play football and enjoy it, but what do you want? You want more yeah. money? Normal, do you know what I mean? You want more money to help your family. You want more <laughs> money to live more. So, if you've got them things in your contract, I think a lot of clubs should, should still be doing that because if you give a 19, 20-year-old the massive money straight away, that's when their performances can drop. No, that's, that's, that's facts. That's facts. It's almost too much too soon, you could say. Yeah, 100%. But some clubs are in, they can't do nothing about it, can they? They've got some yeah. like mad, you know what I mean? Their yeah. agents like, gone to like six different clubs. They've got no choice, have they, to give them what they want? Oh, yeah, it's almost like you, you get stuck in a hostage situation. But on the um, contract renewals, um, Martin O'Neill almost seemed to renew yours almost every year. Did did uh, any other players ever get jealous of that and just think maybe you were kind of like the golden boy or whatever? Do you know what? That, like you did get a few like because especially when I did score for like five six games and then you're playing and you're playing you're playing you're playing. Yeah, if you're a striker. You're gonna be thinking like, w what's going on here? Do you know what I mean? Like how come he's playing every game? But yeah, some managers have their like teachers' pets as you call it. I think me and Ashley Young were like, his teachers to pets, sort of like, you play no matter what. It don't matter if you score three own goals in a game, you'll play next game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I think you would have had jealousy 100%, but when I signed contracts, it was more because I deserved them. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't like playing and not scoring or not assisting. Do you know what I mean? I was getting good numbers. Do you know what I mean? Improving. So yeah. like, just justified. I think that was the thing as well. Yeah, it's season on season under Martin O'Neill. Your numbers just seem to go up and your performances just seem to get a little better. So it was almost like a reward factor. Exactly, but, um, yeah. That um, next season anyway, the 08-09, I think it was, you started off with a perfect hat-trick, I think, against Man City. Right foot, left foot header. Uh, player of the month, I think, came shortly after. And then I think November times, you got your first England call-up. And that was against Germany. What was that like? What was kind of like that going was... through your head? Honestly, like, that was crazy. Like, at that time, like, that England game, I just remember being in the um, the meeting room and, like, no one thought I was starting. I didn't think I was starting. I think it might have been um, 
Carlton Cole or Darren Bent, one of them two. They thought they were going to start the game. I think it might be Carlton Cole. And then Capello read the team out, and it was like, I won the hall. I was like, me? Do you know what I mean? Like, all the strikers, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm getting a chance to play against, like, the enemy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And them times, it was like, do you know what I mean? It was a it was frosty one. Fire, yeah. You were away from home, in Germany, against Germany. Do you know what I mean? It's what dreams are made of, being brought up watching Euro 96 and, like, watching England, you know? So, like, I just remember playing the game and just, like, just trying to give my all, you know? It was one of them games where, yeah, you, I was super nervous. You're getting to play for England, you know what I mean? It's like a dream as a young kid to get yeah. one cap, you know what I mean? And especially against Germany where, you know, everyone back in England is going to be, like, Dying for a win, you know. So I'm for it, that yeah. game, just you know, and then um, I think we won it, didn't we? Two one, was it? Yeah, I think we won the game. Yeah, that was mad. And I remember after the game, um, John Terry, he um, he asked me for my shirt. He says, um, "Pass your shirt here." And he went round and got it signed by the whole team. Oh, that's sick. And uh, yeah, I will give that straight to my dad, and he's got that up in his house. So that was a proud moment for him as well. No, that's big. That's big. And um, how many caps did you end up getting? I think it was three caps in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, three caps, yeah. Did you, did you feel like you could have got more? Like, at yeah, the time, I, you feel like there was a kind of favouritism towards the top four. Where... Yeah, I think, you know what? It was that, but I did pull out of a lot of squads. I was in 16 squads. Okay. And I got three caps. You know what I mean? I pulled out of a lot from... Um, I think maybe I might have put club first before country. Do you okay. Know what I mean? A lot of them games and like picking up knocks on the Saturday before you meet up, especially managers like Martin O'Neill. Do you know what I mean? They're like, no, 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 no. You're one of my star players. We need you for like after international break. You're not going away with like like Hammy. So I pulled out of a lot of squads for like um, them reasons. But I don't know. I think there was a lot of favoritism. But England had some ridiculous players back then. Do you know what I mean? Even for like to get into sixteen squads and three caps, like. That's, like, for me, super proud. If you remember think, the talent England. I mean, at the time, though, like, you could play kind of right wing and up front. And, I mean, you just said there, Carlton Cole, kind of Darren Bent, Heskey, Welbeck, Sean Wright Phillips, Downing. Like, those are kind of players I think you could have competed with at the time. And do you not think you kind of could have got a few nods ahead of them? And did you kind of regret maybe putting club over country a little bit? Um... Yeah, I probably could have um, definitely got more caps and played more games. But I think when you're in that time and you're, you're playing every game for Villa, you know, you're chasing top four with Villa. At that yeah. time, that was what important for me of like, you know what, we've got a chance of getting top four here. If I yeah. go away with England, I might be going away for 10 days. I might not even get on. And I'm going to be training when I can be back at Villa, getting treatment. Do you know what I mean? Getting yeah. massages, treatment. Days, I'm ready for the next game which might be the important game where we get back into the top four. So for me at that time, it was more, yeah, I love playing for England, but if I've, if I've got a, a knock, I'm going to pull out because, you know, and I think similar to some players now, if like they've got a chance of like Champions getting into League. something like that, you know, they're going to like not risk it, are they? No, but I hear that. England has some great players. Like, you're forgetting so many names like Wright Phillips, Downing, Young, Milner. Rooney, like Heskey, oh, Paul, Ben, there's, there's so many. Defoe, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Even to like get three caps and like three starts was like something I'll always be proud of, you know, in, in especially in that era. And well, I, I, looked, I, I imagine go on. the game I, I was playing in, you've got like Beckham, come on, you've got like you're playing with Gerard, Lampard, and like these superstars. And back then it was like, a divide. Now it's more like with England. Yeah, I've man. heard it's everyone's together. There's no one that's like the elite. Does that make sense? Everyone's sort yeah. of like the same. Back then, you had the elite stars of like Gerard, Lampard, Rooney, Beckham. Then you boys, had, you wouldn't even look at, at, in, yeah. at in, when you were at the table in the canteen. You wouldn't even look at them. Do you know what I mean? They were like superstars. Do you know what I mean? Beckham well, just sat past. in the middle. Almost, yeah. Diary. Do you know what I mean? Beckham just sat in the middle on his diary, didn't like, you wouldn't even say hello to him, you were that shook. Do you know what I mean? Like, they were like elite yeah. stars. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That era and still 
get three caps, like something I'll always be proud of. Now, listen, anytime you play for your country, I think it's a big honour and probably any footballer's kind of highest achievement. But I think one of the questions I've hammered with all day, I think, is did you ever consider playing for Nigeria? Yeah, 100%. But yeah. whenever you ask me this, like anywhere I'll go, you know, um, if I see a Nigerian <laughs> person, they didn't even approach me. I'm trying to no? explain to people, like, no, I didn't have a choice. It was like England were the only team that approached me. Scotland okay. not didn't approach me. So it's not like I turned them down. I didn't get asked. Do you know what I mean? Oh, if I got asked, it would have been a different choice then because obviously my dad and like, it would have been, well, I would have had to sit down with him and decide. It would have been a tough decision. But from playing on the 21s for like three years and then into the full team, I never got asked once. Yeah. No, nah, that's, that's, that's mad. I always thought the option was maybe there or something, but that's interesting. <laughs> Um, but then just thinking on that, like, you've now got kind of like the big contract at the club. You're an England international, like, local boy scoring goals. Like, give me a taste of, like, what is nightlife and what's your social life? Like, you just touched on earlier and say you was a party boy. Like, what was that like? You know what? I, I can't complain, you know, like, I just think, like, back then there was no social media. Do you know what I mean? You got away with a lot more. Yeah. Like... We was going out like, we'd go out on a Tuesday night in Funky Border, London, and there'd be half the Premier League in there. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? It was, it was like normal to go out on a Tuesday night. Everyone, yeah. had, everyone, everyone had Wednesday off. Do you know what I mean? So it was like, back then you could like go out on a Tuesday, get steaming, get yeah. drunk, sober up on a Wednesday. Nando was at the tra Houston train station. Back <laughs> home Wednesday, Thursday train, Friday yeah. train. You're young, you know what I mean? You don't feel it. You don't feel the hangovers. Well, and, like, everyone was out. Nowadays, like, you can't go out during the week. But we was out Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, wherever the games are on. Like, guaranteed two nights out a week. But that was just at them times, you know, like, especially, like, Birmingham, you know, being one of the main players at Aston Villa, the best team in Birmingham. 100%, yeah. Enjoying partying as well, you know, it was mad, you know, like, everywhere you went, it was like, I don't know, girls upon girls, and like, party. That mad. But it's just... <laughs> that must have been mad. <laughs> but it was just like, it was just mad, I can't, I can't even explain to you, because like, and even to, 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 to go out in London, and you get in the, the paparazzi after you, and in my head, I'm thinking like, I know I'm playing Premier League, but I'm just this kid from Birmingham. Like, why are you bothered about me? Go get the Chelsea and the, do you know what I mean? The Arsenal boys. Like, yes. but like, everywhere you come out of, the club, the restaurant, they're chasing you. And I was like, what's going on here, man? Like, yeah. And you nah. say to them, what are you doing? Like, we're keeping these pictures for when you fuck up. That was their, always the lines they say to you. So yeah. they're, 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 they're taking, use them for a different time. Do you know what I mean? Oh, wow. So just manipulating kind of what what the image you have out there is. I mean, so like you might have done something and they'll put a picture of you like running across the road outside the club to get into a cab. Do you know what I mean? And then, <laughs> but, who's, who's the usual victims that you'd go out with from that well, dressing that, room? With players, you know. I went out with my boys. I never went out with players. I wanted to like um, sort of separate that and go out with my own friends. Do you know what I mean? Okay. But you'd always... The players were always out. It was through the back door. Do you know what I mean? There were a lot of back doors in the clubs in London in them days. Like, yeah. lads were like, out the back door, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the head down. <laughs> Actually, me on, out the back. You're not, you're, not see, you're not seeing me. Yeah. But, like, but when I look back now, it's like, living that footballer's lifestyle, having a great career, getting the England caps, Earning the money, do you know what I mean? I think like you when I got it. back, I've got no, yeah, no regrets. Do you know what I mean? I've lived yeah. the dream. Like every boy in Birmingham that's a Villa fan lived yeah. that dream of like enjoying it. Do you know what I mean? Even no. like when I think back now, the teachers and the the other kids at school who used to say, you know, you're not going to make it. No one makes it at football. Do you know what I mean? And just to like Facts. prove them people wrong. Yeah, and go yeah. all the way, all the way, and even further. Do you know what I mean? Than I would have ever dreamed of. No, 100%. Oh. Um, 
around that time as well, one of the players that you kind of played with, I think the next season was at the 0-9-10, you kind of had your best tally that year. And um, you ended up getting nominated for the PFA Young Player. And Ashley Young beat you to it. What was your link up like with him? Because you two looked like you had a, similarly to Carew, you had a link up on the pitch and off the pitch. But what's kind of your thoughts on it? He was like, best player I played with, thousand percent. Best player I played with Aston Villa, like, doing, if if you look back now at like videos, what he was doing was a madness. Do you know what I mean? He was killing it. He'd have chalk on his boots, he'd get that ball switched to him, and he's got time to run at you. He was chopping defenders, chopping defenders, and I always knew that, like, if he had that right time where he could put me in behind, he's going to put me in behind. Um, yeah. He'd had that relationship. When I know to leave him and get out of his face, or when I know when to run into his face, do you know what I mean? We had that relationship yeah, of, yeah. like, you know what I mean? If he's going to put no. it into a channel for me, I'm going to get there, I'm going to hold him, I'm going to look for him. It was almost yeah, like a do you know what I mean? Link. This he got me was like mad and like even off, on the pitch, off the pitch in the changing room, on the coach, it was always me and him, you know, the jokers. The terrible me and him, t- like yeah, the terrible mate, like hammering people, I mean <laughs> like playing prank, winding what? people up. But like he was he was unbelievable, man, like What's unbelievable player. Still is how you've seen him evolve, like, because as you said there, I remember him like at Watford and at Villa, like he was a proper crafty winger, skillful, would get you goals. And then to kind of seen him the evolution now where he's playing at either side of fullback and playing in Italy, kind of, what's, what's your kind of thoughts on the development? You know what, did when you, I was watching him, did you ever see that? Well, nah, nah, no. When I see him at United, I'm seeing him like at left back and right back and he's heady balls. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Who's going to be this ain't youngy heady like <laughs> but that shows that like he's gone to Man United, he's got that winning mentality of like and that mentality of like I'll play anywhere. If the manager wants me to play left back or right back, I'm playing there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that and that's how like look, look at the ages now, is he thirty four, thirty five and he's is that into Milan? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like still doing it. Yeah. He's, he's, Left wing back, left back, right back, right wing back in the hole, and that is the position he wants to play the most. Is in the hole. Oh yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's where he probably play the most, and like okay. just he just shows what what it takes to get to that level that he's got to. Do you know what I mean? That next level, that next step is like that mentality of like I can play yeah. anywhere. I'm not gonna. Play. Yeah, a lot of players won't have that. And um, one other player you actually played with that. I think now there's a lot of buzz around. But Jack Grealish, like, he was yeah. there when you were there as well. And kind of like, since then, kind of, how have you seen his game develop? And kind of, what do you think of him? What, how high do you think his ceiling could be? When I see him now, it's sort of like, not similarity to me because we're different players. But, you know, like, when I was talking to you earlier, like, my progression from, like, 2006 to 2008 to 2009, yeah. 10, yeah. that's seen in him sort of like, He's got that natural talent, but now he's getting the strength. If you looked at him, if you seen him up close, you should yeah. see the size of his quads. <laughs> like this like, <laughs> six foot. You know what I mean? He's not like some like little kid like he used to be. He's yeah. grown into a man. He understands the position more. And like he's just what he's doing now is that he's getting the assists, he's getting the goals. He's not just looking pretty. Do you know what I mean? On the pitch, he's getting the stats. Because yeah. That's what they're saying now, don't they? Oh, okay, he's a great player, but has he got the same stats as Madison or Mount? Yeah, he has, and he's got more. Do you know what I mean? And I, yeah, that's, and that's been the big difference into last time when he was in the, when Villa were in the Premier League. It's people are kind of nitpicking at the stats, whereas now you kind of seen him take the championship, step up, mm. come back into the Premier League, and he's stepped up again. But then the question is, is like recently I've been seeing he's linked with like Madrid, Barcelona, mm-hmm. United, and for like. 75 million fees do you think that he could be playing at that level because at Aston Villa he's kind of like the captain the youth product yeah. the number 10 so everything goes through him but then at one yeah. of these he might just be another cog in the system so could he perform to those same levels if he went to a club like that you know what first of all when I, I've said it loads of times like, as a Villa fan myself do you know what I mean you want your best players to stay but mm-hmm. if he one day and I think if he had to go like someone's going to cost someone 80 million. I said this like six months ago. Like, 
He's like, no, do you know what I mean? He's like 24. He's had a perfect day. He's going he's gonna, he's yeah. gonna to hurt you if you want him. But I think he could play anywhere. Barcelona, yeah. Madrid, PSG, anywhere. Like, I said to you, Ashley Young's one of the best players I've played with. But, like, Jack Grealish is not far behind. Like, the stuff he does is, like, trying to explain to you. Like, you could be the quickest player out there, but he just run past you. You know them them gliders, like, in Yeah, yeah. And you just can't get near him. The way yeah. he's like twisting people up in training, he's doing it in games. I mean, if you look at the games this season, he's just running past people, defensive mids like they're not there. And I think if he went to a bigger club, he'd have to learn more discipline of staying in position. Because I think now oh. at Villa, because he's the main man, he's going to the left back to get the ball. He's going to the centre half to get the ball. Obviously, yeah. when you go to the big clubs, you're going to have to stay in your position. Do you know right. what I mean? If you say, yeah. like the likes of Pep and stuff, they'll be saying he's to stay in this part of the pitch. But yeah. he's got the potential to go to the top, to start every game for England, to be the main man for England, to be the main that, man at... That's what I was going to ask. Because a lot of times you're seeing him kind of mixed in with kind of Madison and Ali. And I, I, I think he would have probably gone this year oh. had the Euro happened. Do you reckon he could be yeah, the mainstay in that England team then? You know what? Madison, Ali, Mount, they're all great players, but there's no, there's no comparison for me. Yeah. Because I'm seeing like what Jack offers is like all of what they offer, but he offers he can travel the length of the pitch of the ball. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like look at that stat, he's got one of the highest out of like the England like number ten places. He just he can get the ball and like he's taking it the length of the pitch. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's starting to make the right pass now. He's starting to like take his chances and show that he can shoot. I remember saying to him before, just shoot, you can shoot. Yeah. And this season, he's scoring like, bangers, do you know what I mean? He's scoring like yeah. top four, left foot, right foot, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. for me, he can go as, as as high as he wants to go. He's got the talent, definitely. No, nah, that's interesting, definitely. Um, and I, and I kind of agree that I think he's, he's definitely got a high ceiling, but it's just a matter of, I think, how he takes the next step at the next club. But did, just speaking on kind of him leaving, did you ever consider leaving? Because he's kind of in a similar situation where you were, where he's kind of performing at the peak of his powers at Villa. But yeah, but you, it's different because, because at, after that old nine ten season, you had your highest uh, tally, yeah. and then the season you kind of signed a five year deal. But I think what was it Ashley Young, James Milner, Gareth Barry all kind of went on and had big money moves and kind yeah. of maybe got the wage or whatever. But they went on to win silverware as well. Was there yeah. ever like a jealousy on your side thinking, hmm, maybe I should consider a move? Or was you like Villa all the way through and through? Well, first of all, the difference with that is that Villa have just got into the Premier League again now, haven't they? They've got like yeah. a deep squad, but they're not where we was. We was like four, fifth, six throughout the season, fighting for fourth. So why would I move sidewards? Okay, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At that time, yeah. I could have went to... Spurs were interested, do you know what I mean? And I um, they spoke to my agent and stuff. But at that time, I was like, me and my agent were like, why am I going to move sideways to Spurs? We're both fighting for top four. It don't make sense. Yeah. But it's different times, isn't it, for Aston Villa at the moment. So it's a different sort of position for him at the moment. For me at that time, I'm playing with these great players. Yeah. Barry, Barry yeah. Young, uh, Downing, Petrov, Carew. Do you know what I mean? At that time, and I think... At that time, with the relationship I had with the owner, Randy Lerner, was like, basically, like, everyone else can go, but you ain't going nowhere. Yeah. You know, them ones, like, paying to, like, keep the ship up. You, sort of you was the golden boy. Yeah. I mean, like, like you, you, you're not going nowhere. Okay, we, if we get 30 million for this player, 40 million for this player, okay, we'll take it. But, like, you're going nowhere. So, like, and it was weird at that time. Like, I think clubs knew that I wouldn't go anywhere. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm like all these clubs and that, but I think everyone knew at that time that like Bon Hall is going nowhere. He's yeah. like Aston Villa. He ain't going nowhere. Do you know what I mean? Villa aren't no dead team. Villa were fighting for fourth, finishing sixth three seasons in a row. You know, like why am I going to move to the likes of like Arsenal and um, Spurs at the time who were who fighting for beating nearby? Yeah, yeah, yeah but make, to... makes sense. Um, you look at, what was it? Back to back six place finishes, I think it was. Uh, three in a row. Yeah, three in a row was it? And then you had the League Cup final against United, like 
do you think that team kind of reached its full potential at that point? Um, you know what? No, I don't think so, no. I just think we needed a few more players to, like, help us. I think when we got to that League Cup final, like, we'd already lost Barry. Do you know what I mean? Like, we didn't keep the team together for long enough. It was yeah. like, if if I get the right, if I'm the owner, if I get the right amount of money, you're gone. Where, yeah. like, maybe owner, like, let's say the Wolves owner, if someone offers 50 million for Jota, you'll probably say, no, get out of here. Your money ain't yeah. nothing to me. Do you know what I mean? That's the, that's the sort of mentality we needed of, like, you want Barry, you're not having him. You want Milner, you're not having him. You want Young, you're not having him. We're going to build something to, like, get to the next level. But we were just, like, a selling club. I think that's what cost us in the end. And I, and I think even, like, afterwards, did you kind of see the... When you saw players kind of coming and leaving, did you kind of see the decline or the way it was going? Yeah. It, like, every player we lost was a decline. It was, like... You can't... When, when you've when you when you got a successful team that, like... We, we were going to, like, United away, Chelsea away, Spurs, Arsenal away, and, like, confident of beating them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Once you start to, like, dismantle that team and, like... First to go was Barry, wasn't it? And I That's think, like... Your leader. Do you know what I mean? Our leader, captain, like, yeah. like one of the best players in the Premier League is ever going to have. And then to lose, like, Milner, who was, like, on fire. Do you know what I mean? He was on fire. Sent him in. Left. Move, he was tearing it up at Villa, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, like, once you start losing these players and then, like, you, you, they're irreplaceable. It don't matter who you bring in. Like, we weren't bringing in the players that were, like, as good. So, yeah. we started. Do you know what I mean? And that, that was the problem at that time. And I think that team that, like, got to the league final wasn't as good as the team from 2008 2009 where we yeah. had Barry do you know what I mean we had like Martin Larson do you know what I mean he was that weak. was like, Martin Larson Larson was like didn't lose a header didn't lose a tackle you had Barry you had like Even next Mil- they had like Melberg and then Sorensen behind him that little Scandinavian trifecta was solid that, like we were just going to like games and just like confident of like don't matter where we go we're gonna win you know yeah and, Maybe, like, when, they, when all them players look back now, obviously not for the ones that have gone on to win leagues with other clubs, but we should have got into the top four. That was a guarantee. We should have won that game against Man United because that field down the early lead as well in that one. You know what I mean? How is that yeah. not a big card? You know what I mean? When you look yeah. back at the like, When you look back, though, like, that's football for you, isn't it? But that team was, like, a good team to play with, a special team. Yeah. And um, after sort of O'Neill left, kind of, do you think um, you had like a revolving door of managers almost every year where it was changing? But I think the first one who came in was kind of Gerard Houllier. Kind mm-hmm. of, what was your relationship with him and kind of like what, what impact did he have on the club? You know what? When, when I look back now, I mean, I remember I'd done an interview after it, um, when McLeish came in and I sort of hammered Houllier. But maybe that was me throwing my toys out the pram because I wasn't playing. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Always, isn't it? If you're gonna like not play the manager, you're gonna throw your toys out of the pram. I played for like four seasons under Martin O'Neill, so like to then be like not playing. But what happened with Mayim Julio was like he come in and changed the formation. He started playing one up front. Yeah. He signed Darren on it. Yeah. Ashley Young wanted to play in the hole, so he got his way. The little fucker. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so like that team was on the right. You had like. All Brighton coming and playing on the left. So, like, I was on the bench and I was thinking, like... Where am I going to get? Had your best season. Do you know what I mean? Of goals. And then he just it came is... high. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just like... So, just like, they're highs. They, like, I was like, huh? So, I'm just sitting on the bench now. I'm sitting on the bench now. And I'm just like, nah. So, even in training, I was just, like, head loss. Like, I remember one time... um. McAllister, he was like, the ones that didn't play, I've got to do some runs. I was yeah. like, I ain't running. I was like, I ain't running. I was like, I run on the pitch on Saturday, but I'm not running. I'm not doing some like mad runs because I'm the one getting pied. Do you know what I mean? Like a punishment sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So like, me and McAllister sort of clashed and then me and Julia sort of clashed because even when I was coming on and scoring, I you was were... just sort of like angry. No, you're not celebrating. Because you're angry. Don't you know, ones, you're sc- like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm still pissed off with you. You're not, you're not starting me. Like, 
you know what I mean? So, like, all that season was, like, off the bench, hard start, but I scored a few goals as well coming off the bench. But it was just, like, what was mad about it as well was because at that, that season I signed a five-year deal. But you know what that was because? Why? Great, great agency. Okay. What happened there? Because at that time... Ashley Young had said that he's not going to sign um, a deal, basically. So, like, he was going to go at the end of that season. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, my agent sort of went in and said um, to, like, the chief exec, he said, like, why not bring some good news to the club, some positive news? Martin O'Neill's left. So-and-so's left. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, let's bring yeah, yeah. news. Why not, like, show that you've got Gabby signed up on a long-term contract? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my favour, my agent sort of like saying to them, do that. And then like they were like, yeah, you're right. We know Ashley's going to leave. So like, let's get some good news to Villa fans. Do you know what I mean? No. I'm and, sure. like, and like, I'm thinking like, I've signed a five-year deal and I'm on the bench. Like, what's going on? 100%. It don't make sense because you've gone from this high of your yeah, best yeah. England international, new contract. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden now you've gone to ride on the bench. It just kind of doesn't make sense. Give me, like, one of the highest paid contracts at that time. Do you know what I mean? And, like, I'm thinking, like, so it don't add up. So if you're going to give someone a massive contract yeah, and pay them, like, this doesn't make sense, does it? That's what was no. so frustrating at that time. And, and like, at that time during Gerard Houllier, like, I noticed, like, you'd kind of bulked up a little bit as well. Was that an attempt to kind of, like, change your game and, like, add a little bit more? Yeah, because... At that time, I've been pied to, like, change formations. Football had changed. Formations had changed. No one played 4-4-2. Yeah. It was, like, 4-5-1, 4-3-3. So, in my head, I thought, is it me not strong enough to play that holding role of, like, yeah. one up front? But you know what? Let me get in the gym. Let me bulk up. The weights aren't going to hurt when you go to, like, holidays. Do you know what I mean? The, like, the beach body's not going to hurt if you get, like, the chest bigger. So... Yeah. At that time, I was like, why not? Why not, like, bulk up? And then there's no excuse then. You can't say to me that I'm getting bullied by defenders on my own. You can't say I'm not winning flick-ons. You yeah. can't say I'm not holding the ball up. So that was the main reasoning there of, like, you know what? I'm going to bulk up. And, like, I'm still going to be quick in every, every defender in the league. Yeah. But not as quick as the, the season before, but still quick enough. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to be able to... You feel like you've lost the yard of pace in gaining that muscle yeah. as well. Yeah. 100% because you're going to earn you yeah, the, the heavy you muscles are and stuff. You're going to lose a bit of pace. But as it showed, I was still quicker than every defender. So it didn't yeah. really affect me. I could bully defenders more as well. So I was quicker than them and I could bully them more. So, like, I think it helped me for him. Um, yeah, definitely for the good. And then when kind of Alex McLeish came in as well, you kind of had like a unique situation in football, I like to think, with um, Stylian Petrov and going through cancer and kind of what was that like and how did that kind of, what was the atmosphere like at the club and how did it affect the players at the club yeah it was it was devastating for everyone um because stan was always the fittest player the hardest working trainer the hardest working player so we were all thinking like how can you get such an awful disease when you're so fit and you're so healthy and you eat right you live right like he did so we yeah. were all confused and, like, upset of, like, wow. Like, do you know what I mean? It was sort of a wake-up yeah. call of, like, like any life, do you know what I mean? And, like, we were just, like, devastated. And I remember, um... Because McLeish was quite... A, a, I, I did like McLeish in a way, but he was quite a weak manager, you know? Like... Okay. I, huh? How do you mean that he was a weak manager? So even, like... The first day we, we come into pre-season, we sat down and, um, you know, the whole squad. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, reading up a piece of paper, read, and he was like, I'm a bit nervous here, lads. This is a big job for me. I'm a bit nervous. Yeah. I remember some players, some players at the back were like, oh, we got him here. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I think <laughs> or pretend that you're the main man, even though you might be a bit nervous. You don't tell yeah. the players on the first day of pre-season that, like, 
I'm, do you know what I mean? I'm nervous. So we were like, you know what? We've got him here. We've yeah. got him. Sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Because he, 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 shown his sign of weakness almost. And for me, he just took Birmingham City down, the arch rivals, and then you come to Villa. I'm thinking yeah. like, Randy, are you... <laughs> like, what, what has he like, has he like poisoned your, your like the, the interview? Like, how dare you give him the Villa... <laughs> You know what I mean, I was like, I was distraught. There were there were yeah. like riots at the fans were writing at the ground. Like whenever we lost the game, it was like you'd lost ten nil when you lost one nil. Fans were yeah. trying to get on the pitch because it's unforgivable. You can't come from Birmingham City as a manager. Just then, like it's in space of like six weeks, you're the manager of Villa. No, nah, that's like nil. But then, Rangers, but then you can look at it in a sense of he did get them relegated, so you know it might have done you a favour there. Nah, but like <laughs> they're those. Um, but at that time, I'm thinking like, like I wasn't have, I wasn't having him from day from day one. I was like, I'm not having you. Like, do you know what I mean? You're like my enemy still. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But as it went on, you know, we um, I think he like he was all right, and then. After the bad thing that happened with Petrov, he was just like, he called me into the office and he said, um, who do you think should be captain? And I was like, Richard Dunn, James Collins, you know, like, the centre half. Yeah. you know what I mean? I was a bit of like, centre half captains. And he was like, I was thinking you, I was thinking you, what do you think? Do you know what I mean? So basically he was asking me wanting to be captain. And I was like, yeah, of course, do you know what I mean? Put that armband on. Of course I will. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> um, yes. Like, the extra responsibility. Do you know what I mean? I was buzzing through it at the time. And, like, I remember putting the armband on and thinking, like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm like, captain now. Do you know what I mean? you got to, like... Do you know what I mean? you got to, like, rise your performances a bit more. And, um, yeah. yeah, I was just captain for the rest of that season. And, um, yeah, we stayed up, but... McLeish was all right. I just think, like, if you do that on your first day, do you know what I mean? Like, how a player's going to respect you, you know? Yeah. You just lose sort of, like, um, thing a manager needs, don't you? No, 100%. 100%. And um, with Petrov, kind of, like, how, how that was handled, what was your thoughts on that? Kind of, like, how he was released from the club and everything? So, um, so when Petrov, like, finally, like, got better, he, um, he come back in there pre-season on the Di Matteo. Mm -hmm. But, like, I remember, like, we were doing all the runs in pre-season and, like, I wasn't a great runner anyway. You know, like, them, like, pre-season runs. I weren't yeah. great in them. Bleak but he was with me. Yeah, like, I was dead, mate. The first one out. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but Pet was next to me and, like, he was struggling. And I said, you know what, Stan? Do it for your kids. I said, do it for your kids. You can do this. Yeah. You can do these runs. And he got through the runs, do you know what I mean? He didn't drop out of any run. He'd done every single run. And, like, I said to, I said to like, him afterwards, like, how do you feel? And he was just like, okay, but I'm struggling. But he got through it, do you know what I mean? He was that determined to make a comeback. He got through it. And then, like, Di Mattel didn't offer him anything. Do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll hate Di the rest of my life for that because... Seriously. Any other manager, any bit of heart, any single bit of heart would have given him pay as you play. There's like a month or there's six months. Let's see how you are. Do you know what I mean? But for you to be such, so ruthless and heartless to like not even give him a chance to like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, no for real. Do you know, like, imagine you come back from like that horrific disease. You've got yourself That's fit. You've lost all this weight. Yeah, like you've lost all this weight that you put on through your treatment. You come back, you've done every run in preseason that the nineteen-year-olds are doing. Yeah, and you can't give me anything. Do you know what I mean? Like I even said to Dima Sal, like, what, what, what are you doing? Like, how can you not? Do you know what I mean? Like, the what? Even to this day, like words can't describe me. If I ever seen Dima Sal, I'll tell him, like, like you're a waste man from not ever like giving him something. Do you know what I mean? You know, like, yeah. stopping someone from like imagine that comeback for a season. Petrov's come back and like he's that's... like got over Luke and he's come back and he's there playing holding mid, starting attacks off a of villa in the championship. Come on. He could have done that for like 
Fact, even as a neutral, like, I think that was one of the things I think a lot of fans are waiting for, kind of like to see his recovery and see if he can acclimatise to football again. And then when you saw him getting involved in the training, you thought, yeah, he's nearly there. But for the next thing you know, he'd been let go. Exactly. But this is the problem with managers sometimes. They're scared of people that might be powerful. Yeah. And Stan was, Stan was not a normal guy, do you know what I mean? Like, he's one of my close friends now, but that's what managers are scared of. That's yeah. why he wanted me to be Mateo. He didn't, like, I went through the whole season, right? Imagine, oh, again. Imagine going through the whole pre-season, fittest you've been for a while, and then the day before the, get the, the first game of the season, the manager yeah. calls you in the other. I'm thinking, like, he's going to say, you know what, you're playing on the left. He, he called me and he's gone, um, I want you to leave. I was like, huh? Right. Eh? What, what are you talking about, mate? I've been here since yeah. I was 12. Like, leave. It's what I say. I said it to him in the office. I said, mate, you leave. Like, who are you talking to? Like, do you know what I mean? Because I always spoke my mind with managers. And, like, I fell out with a few managers over it. I was like, what do you mean? Go where? He was like, um, Rangers and Reading. Um, want you? I was like, mate, I ain't going to Rangers. No disrespect, but I'm not going up to Scotland to play, like, or Reading. I was like, yeah. I ain't going nowhere. I said to him, like, I'll be here longer than you. Is what I said to him in his office. <laughs> I mean, I was like, you know what I mean? Like, and, like, since that thing with Petrov and, like, him trying to, like, throw me out, and then he got me into the office with the owner, um, who was, like, a fraud anyway. But, like, he was like, you know what, go on loan, you know, show that you really love the club by going on loan and doing well. Yeah. I was like, I'm not no, you talk to me like I'm a 19 year old or yeah. like a 17 year old. Like, listen, I'm going nowhere. <laughs> it, don't talk to me. I'll go and play, I'll go and train with the under 23s. Yeah, so yeah. So I had to do a walk, a 10 minute walk every day to the under 23 pitch on my own. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I was like, I'll do. I, I, I'm seeing you out. I've got like three years left on my contract. I'm not going nowhere, Roberto. Do you know what I mean? No. And, like, and if you've still got time on your contract, though, you're in a position of strength there. Come on. Ten, ten games, he's gone. Do you know what I mean? See ya. See ya. So he was definitely not one you got on with. Um, do you know what I mean? But just before he came, you had Tim Sherwood, who helped you get to he an FA Cup final. What was yeah. he like? He was good, man. I liked Tim Sherwood because... Um, he, was, he had that charisma of, like, you know, them London guys, like, you know, like, he had that, that like, cocky swagger. But, but, like, he was good with it. When he first came in, he changed training. Training was harder. He had his own ideas. He had that buzz. We stayed up. We got to the final of the cup. And then um, what cost us that next season was that he didn't get to choose the players. This is the problem in football. Okay. You've got the, the people up there who... Decide what players you have. Okay. If you're so not a guy like Jose or Pep or what, do you know what I mean? These managers, some of them, they're not picking their players. They're not signing them. So, like, yeah. share with them. You know what? Say again. Director of football or some executive yeah. doing that, basically. So, at that time, we brought in a lot of, like, French players. But a lot of them have gone on to have amazing careers. Do you know what I mean? Like, Idrissa Gay is up, like... Very yeah, few, one, yeah. All great players, but at that time, it was like too, too many new players to the league at the wrong at the at the same time. Do you know what I mean? We needed like the likes of Aaron Lennon to come in, Premier League experience, who Sherwood wanted. They're like a mixture. But what the club wanted to do was like get the players over on cheaper money. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? From the French leagues, but it just didn't work. Like it was just didn't work that season. And and I remember even at the time, it was like a trend because I remember Newcastle a few years had been doing that as well, signing a lot of talent from the French League and just kind of selling yeah. it for bigger money type of thing. So it almost seemed like a trend. Yeah, that was the idea, but it just didn't like come off for us at the time, you know, I think. But your team that kept us up was pretty good, you would say. Say again. Your relationship with Sherwood was pretty good then because... Uh, when I uh, just doing some digging up, like uh, for the FA Cup <laughs> final, he didn't start you. Yeah, but you know what? When I look back, like, they beat Liverpool in the semi final. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, how are you going to change a team who wins against Liverpool and then put me in? But what was mad about that was 
I popped my hamstring against Spurs. I think it was ah. like three weeks before the semi-final. And I was racing back to be fit, begging him to play me. It was like, you're not ready. The physios are saying, you're not ready. I'm like, I'm ready. So I missed out that game because he said, like, I'm not ready with the, with the, with the injury. So then, like, the team done so well that, like, what can I say? I didn't, yeah. speak to him for a, I didn't speak to him for a day afterwards, but we were cool with me and Sherwood. He was a top manager. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. you had Jeremy Gard come in afterwards as well. What was what was kind of your relationship with him, seeing a foreign manager come in for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, shaking the head worries me. <laughs> Mate, had, like, I don't know, man. Like, it was, like, the opposite of way I, the way, like, I wanted to, like... I don't know. Like he, apparently, he'd come from the Julio school. Okay, does that make sense? Do oh, Julio or something? I remember one of the players saying to me um, on the first day, they were like, "You think Julio was bad? Wow, you're gonna hate this guy." That was like a quote from one of the players yeah. that knew him already. He was just, you know, what was wrong with him? He was just arrogant to a different level of like, if we're doing a training session now and like the standards poor. Everyone's giving the ball away. If you're a manager, you're going to come in and like stop the session and say, you do this right, you do this right, let's get it going again. He'd stand on the side like that. Yeah, and it just has a negative effect. You know, but like, come and tell us if there's a problem. Like, don't shake your head like a, yeah. a ball teacher on the playground. Do you know what I mean? Like, stand on the opposite side of the pitch, didn't say a word during training, nothing during games. Like, Honestly, like, if he can manage in the Premier League, then, like, a lot of people can. I'm telling you. <laughs> <He's> a... <laughs> what the... uh, you didn't have a lot of ratings for him because he nah. stripped you off your captaincy as well during that season when you lost fighting relegation. And obviously that was more to do with, like, when you'd gone out to Dubai and things like that. But your relationship yeah. with him kind of didn't seem good from the get-go. But what was that kind of like dealing with that, getting stripped from the captaincy of your boyhood club? But that wasn't um that was my idea to um give the okay. captain's yeah it wasn't I wasn't stripped of it it was my okay. idea it was because um obviously because of like getting caught smoking shisha getting caught doing balloons which sixty percent of footballers were doing but it's just about not getting caught in it just yeah. you know, <laughs> hey, like, do it but don't get caught I was got yeah. caught hand in the cookie jar so right. like. It was my idea to strip myself with the captaincy. I thought, you know what? Let me do the right thing. You know, like off the field, I'm not showing the right attitude at like a time where I should have been. So like, I know I was in the wrong at that time. But as I said in an um, interview before, like during that time, I had a lot of off the field problems with yeah. like friend, like so and so. Do you know what I mean? So like, I was in the paper a lot. I had the stress of all that. Then I started like not concentrating during training, putting on weight from the stress. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. sort of letting it go sort of thing because of the stress off the field. Yeah. Then, like, any chance you get to go away, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to buy. Yeah, fuck it, I'm taking it. Uh, and you're not thinking someone's going to take a video from, of you doing shisha at a pool party. Sure, this would yeah. be... That's, that's mad. The, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, did you, yeah. Did you feel but, like that season then, you maybe lost your love for the game a little bit? I mean... You're fighting relegation for the first time. You're kind of, as you said, going through personal problems. Like, that must have had a little knock-on effect kind of for your love for the game. And, like, what we were talking about earlier, how many seasons are you going to, like, take the best players, take the best players, take the best players, then finally, like, Benteke goes, then Delph goes. It's like... Yeah. Who's, who's going who's who's to take the stadium? Who's going to the stadium going to go? <laughs> We're going to play, yeah. like, uh, like, at that time, it's like, you can't fight relegation, fight relegation, fight relegation, fight relegation, and then stay up. That to Sunderland. If you keep flirting with relegation, you're going to go down sooner or later. And I think yeah. Randy Lerner probably thought, you know what, I'm going to keep cashing in, cashing in, cashing in, cashing in on these players, and I'll stay up, I'll stay up, I'll stay up. Then eventually, do you know what I mean? Stay up. Do you know what I mean? No. It was like, like an investment to owners, isn't it? It was like, yeah, it's yeah true. keep taking my money out of this investment or whatever, sell these players. But then the team that I've got, it's not good enough to stay up. I mean, we wasn't good enough. No, facts. You know I hear that. We weren't good enough. 
Facts, facts. Like the players have gone on to be special players now, some of them. But at yeah. that time, we weren't good. Like the season, we stayed up with Sherwood, and like Cleverly was on fire. Um, Andy Wyman, bad player. Wyman. Andy Wyman, who had a good link up, up there at the time. You're letting all these players that have like, do you know what I mean? They've kept us up, and then yeah. like you bring players that aren't proven in the Premier League. You can't. That's why you can't mess about in the Premier League. You can't. Bring over seven, eight players who aren't proven. You can bring two or three over and mix them with proven players and youth, but you can't just go like boom, seven players. You can't do that. No, nah, facts. And just them um, kind of like oh, with everything happening at the time, there was there seemed to be so much kind of like talk around the club, around yourself, and like, did you ever feel like you had harassment from the media almost? Like it's something that Carl Walker, I think, and um, Jordan I've even recently touched on where the papers are just kind of like relentless at footballers and did you ever feel that at that time? I, I did 10 times worse than them guys 10 times from day one from day one I was like you know if you got the like the main boy in the team in the city I was like you know what they're like we're on him he's our target do you know what I mean they'll target certain players who think yeah. like you know what I'll target him I think he likes to go out I'm going to target him I think he likes women. I'm going to target him. Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah. they were me, do you know what I mean? And, like, I remember when um, my mom, who left me as uh, me and my, my siblings as a two year old, she tried to get in touch when I'd made it, basically, after leaving when I was two. Okay. And um, she the story for the papers, basically, saying that, oh, like, wow. oh, there's two stories, blah, blah, blah. And the papers sent paps to my dad's house that I brought him got through the gates and took a picture of him against the door. He's on the phone. So he must have knocked on the door and they're taking pictures of him. And I'm just like, yeah, man. there's nothing that can't do these guys. You know what I mean? There's nothing that that's... can't do. Like, that's what like, when we were about the Carl Walker and the Jordan I, but me, it was like, they're on me. Yeah. And whenever I messed up, it was like, bam. Do you know what I mean? I remember like that season that we got relegated. I was in the, I was, I, I was getting messages Three days in a row by people walking past um, train stations saying, you're on the front page of the sun, you're on the front page again, you're on the front page. Three days in a row. And I'm thinking, like, I'm on the front page out of the whole world. Yeah. I'm bothered about me. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're that bothered about the Hall from Birmingham to put him on the front page of the national paper for three days in a row. Are you that much of, like, a bu it's like a bullying thing, do you know what I mean? So, like... Bro. I'm getting like the media guy at Villa saying the night before because you always find out the night before, so your heart goes, that stomach, in, your stomach goes, and you're like, oh, shh, you're joking. You they found out about, they found out about that, they found out about that, and you're like, no, you know, you can't sleep because you know the papers is coming out in the paper in the morning. Yeah, and all them stories are about my private life. Do you know what I mean? It's like the dig, 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 and then when you finally like break. Then you do something like I did with the shisha and the balloons. Yeah. Then they're, they're on you again. Yeah, hundred percent. That's what I was going to say. Where it kind of just adds up and adds up and adds up, and they're just waiting to target on that. And mentally strong, but it won't be long before footballers not, and they yeah. do break and crazy because it's sort it's sort of bullying. Do you know what I mean? It's like no. okay, do you know what I mean? No, it's fact, like that. That's, it fucks yeah. with your mental as well because especially like when your parents can't relax at, at the inside their own home and like they're waiting exactly. like beaches outside like that's the worst thing you need man exactly so they've got they've got no limits of like what they'll do do you know what i mean like just to get a picture of my dad because my mum who left me at three is trying to say that there's two sides to a story and like yeah. me and my siblings we like we don't want to know don't come come now because your son's made it as a premier league footballer yeah and if you live like two minutes from the ground, then all of a sudden you want to like, do you know what I mean? You want to pay day, yeah. You want to pass off your son because he's made it. You missed out on 20, 20 years. Like, do you know what I mean? Go back to what you was doing. So I'm not interested. But Charity. that'll make. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah. so, I like that. So then, so them lengths. It's just what the um the media will do. Did you ever feel like at that time, like Villa fans had maybe turned on you, like with everything going on at your life and maybe fans not being privy to that kind of information? Yeah. But like, did you ever feel, did you feel the love from the Villa fans or was it like you felt like they'd kind of turned on you at the time? 
No, I think it definitely turned on me, but it doesn't help what the media say. I remember, like, my mate, remember Andy Gray? Yeah. He was he works in um, Bain Sports or something, and like I remember my mate sending me like the video, and he went in on me. He was like, "Gabby Bonnehall's been deceiving Villa fans for years. He's a disgrace." I'm like, "Whoa, Andy! Like, don't take it out of me because like yeah. just got sent away because of like, how you acted on like Sky." I'm thinking like, when fans see that, they believe that. Do you know what I mean? It's all about what fans see. Do you know what I mean? They don't know what, like, my problems were off the pitch. Do you know what I mean? And, like, yeah. that was something that I spoke about, really, till recently. So, definitely yeah. fans turn, but I don't blame them for turning. Okay. Do you know what I mean? They're seeing it as, like, Villa are getting relegated and I'm out partying, enjoying life. They just see the surface level type. Do you know what I mean? They're not seeing yeah. the reason behind it. People deal, uh, with, people deal with problems a different way. Yeah. I with, like, success partying and, like, when all the shit was going down, I'll party as well. Do you know what I mean? Which I shouldn't have yeah. done. It was my way of getting away from all the stress and just like, do you know what I mean? No, so I hear like, that. I understand, I understand them though, um, being on my back, definitely. And it seems like they love you now, so it all seems well anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the kind of like, towards your kind of end of your career, when you went down to the championship, Steve Bruce came in and he almost gave you like a new lease of life almost like to try and give you kind of like one final push kind of what was what was kind of your time under him like you know what when you first come in Steve Bruce he was unbelievable he was just like you've got too much talent to like to not be involved like what are you doing with the other 23 don't forget like this is the funny thing about like when people say that like players aren't loyal to clubs and this I don't blame them because when a club don't want you the way they treat you I mean they set me down to like the under 23s, I was walking through the snow, the rain, 10 minutes to train with like sometimes 16 year olds, yeah. then walk back. Do you know what I mean? The first team players don't really because you got outcast. Do you know what I mean? And that's how like players get treated. If a club don't want them, they'll throw them in the 23s. Do you know what I mean? And I think there should be rules against that. Of yeah. like, you know what? We don't go down with them. Do you know what I mean? Do your own schedule. So obviously, when yeah. Bruce came in, I was not. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't like. From being fit before Di Matteo told me he didn't want me, why am I going to stay fit? Do you know what I mean? September, yeah. October. Yeah, yeah. October. And, and the mindset. Not, be there, yeah. But no enthusiasm to train with like under 23 manager or players because I've done that. You know I mean, I've been doing that before. So I'm just like not fit. So when Bruce came in, he just said, you know what, Gabby, just get fit and like you're back in. So from then, I was just like, bam, three sessions a day. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was getting ready for, like, a fight. I was, bam, like, yeah. the feet in the best shape I've been in in, like, four weeks. Okay. And then you put against Blues um, when I wasn't even meant to be in the squad. I was just there to, yeah. like, travel yeah. with the team. But he was on real, Steve Bruce, and, like, he was just reminding me a bit of Martin O'Neill. Just, you know, them, like, old-school managers. Like, all English manager, been through it all, seen it all. It will give players a chance to work hard. Yeah. But, I was just not the same player. Do you know what I mean? I just knew it. At that time when I come back, I was like, not the same player. Yeah. I just knew it in my... Is that, is that why you know... signed early then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wasn't... I, yeah, I, knew, I knew my time was up. Yeah. Okay. I just knew. You just when you're like a footballer... Body, you couldn't give... Are... Yeah. Say again. I said, your body, you just feel like your body couldn't give you what it used to give you, basically. Like, where you had a big pace was a big part of your game yeah. and like you yeah. can get to that speed and that level anymore uh, pace it was you know it, was, it wasn't me that pay was pace was part of it but it was like i was used to like sprint stop run back sprint stop run back but like my body wouldn't do that it was like yeah. after training i felt like i played a game so you know, like like my body was just like battered injuries galore hamstrings calves Come back calf again. I'm just like, you know what? This is enough. And yeah. like, I had the chances to go down the leagues, but like, I always said to myself from day one, like, I'm not going down the leagues. There's no disrespect to like the other leagues, but having such played at such a high level with Villa, England, I couldn't go down the leagues. Do you know what I mean? What were some of the worst offers you got then? Did you did you get any offers from kind of lower league down or abroad or anything? 
Yeah, you know what? The abroad ones was never an option. Doesn't matter who it was because I've got okay. like um, I've got kids, so like I will never leave my kids to go and play abroad. Yeah, it will never be an option. I couldn't me because you know they're settled in Birmingham. So like um, yeah, there was there was bits, there was a few from abroad, but some of the ones there was like I remember I was I was in um Portugal pre season time and there was an offer from Rotherham, but it was like to come and train. It was like yeah. to come and train, basically trial. And like, a major phoned me like, we just both started laughing. He was like, you know what? <laughs> but you're not the same player you used to be. Because we've got yeah. that relationship. He was like, the bad press. Managers don't really want to touch you with the bad press. Some of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're not going to get... And I was just like, you know what? I've had a good run. Great career, done everything, lived a life. I'll walk now. Do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll walk now. It's fine Leap. with me. I'm not going to be going down to league on a Tuesday night when Barca are playing in the Champions League and getting battered yeah. around, not service, not scoring in 20 games. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going out like that. Like I'm not going out like that. So for me, it was like, nah. Then like the more it went on. The manager of Sweet, no, the manager of Wrexham messaged me on WhatsApp. I'm like, how you get my number? Yeesh. The manager, of Hollywood <laughs> Mall. I'm just like, nah. But that, when that happened, that's when I, I called the retirement to make it official because I was like, just so everyone knows, like, I'm not going out like that. Do you know what I mean? I'm off. I'm off limits. Yeah. <laughs> but you, my body sort of wasn't the same, mate. So like, I just knew I was breaking down too much. And sometimes, like, if you had that much mileage from like playing football your whole life. Everyone yeah. retires at a certain age, don't they? Do you know what I mean? And maybe no, when I look... Say again? No, 100%. I agree with that. And and it's weird. You see a lot of players that will play till 40, till their bodies absolutely crash. And you've also got your kind of... your life after football to think about. Exactly. And I think what I was lucky as well was like... Because I'd been clever financially, I didn't need to play financially as well. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, if you're in a different position financially, sometimes you gotta play. It's all we know. Do you know what I mean? So like, when you gotta pay your bills, you need to carry on playing. But if if you've looked after your money and played at a, a good level where you've earned great money, then it puts you in a better position to retire early. Nah, no, fair play to you, man. Like, kind of signing out on a high. What was just on um, just on that? What was the most you'd ever earned at Villa anyway? At one point. <laughs> You're going to get me, like, hammered in here. Nah, I can't, I can't say the amount. <laughs> I can't say the amount, but, like, you know what? Like, I did earn, like, really good money. Do you know what I mean? And when I look back in my, like, my stats and what I did give for the team, do you know what I mean? I look back and I think I deserved every penny, you know? I don't think there was ever um, a time where I think to myself, I didn't deserve that. Do you know what I mean? Maybe the time where I had the off-the-field problems um, when we went down, but for the rest of the time, I think I like um, justified the um, the wages that I earned. Fair play, fair play. Any ideas to go into? Lastly, just kind of any ideas to go into coaching or management or anything? It's something that I want to do coaching. I'm um, I'm halfway through my um, UEFA A. I've passed my UEFA B already, and I'm halfway through my UEFA A. So the reason why I want to do coaching is just to you know just give something back. You know, like the experiences that I've went through since a kid. If I can yeah. help another kid from Birmingham, improve and make it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I want to go and coach a senior level or anything. I like to coach a probably like a lower a lower age, help a player, jet him into a better player, use my experiences to make a 13-year-old make his debut at 19. I think the joy that I'd have from... Do you know what I mean? The yeah. joy that I'd have from a player would be, like, better than anything I've done. So, we'll see. Nah, that's sick, man. And um, lastly, just a couple of quick-fire ones, basically. Yeah. Um, what would you say is your highlight or best moment of your career? I think the highlight, I'd say, was playing for England against Germany. Yeah. I think, um, you know, like, I was over the moon to play for Aston Villa and score against Birmingham City and score at Old Trafford and the Emirates. Scored and a couple of them. Every, everywhere, really. Stamford Bridge, I mean, White Hart Lane. But to play for your country something else. And if you look back 
all the players in the Premier League that haven't played for England, you'd be shocked at how many there is. Yeah. And just how like hard it is to do. Do you know what I mean? So to 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 look back now and to have made three caps and to make my debut against Germany, it's like a massive thing for me. So that'll be my highlight. Nah, that's big. Um, you said I think the best player you played with was um, Ashley Young and Jack Grealish. But um, who's the hardest player you've played against? You know what? I've, I've, I've answered this a few times. And like, I think Ledley King, you know. Yeah. He was tough. Like, he was tough. Like, John Terry, Rio Ferdinand are up there and Vincent Company. But like, I don't know. Like, when Ledley King was fit and I played against him, like, you couldn't get past him. Like, he was quick, strong, yeah, good on the ball. He, he was around a and a half on his day, and I think I, d I didn't get the better of him once, I don't think, Ledley King. So, I'll say Ledley he's, King. He's one of those players I think everyone always wonders, had he stayed fit and been available, unavailable from the injuries? I mean, he could have been a real, real elite, elite player. He's so unfortunate with the injuries. That's, but, that's um, the problem, isn't it? He was fit. He was unbelievable. Yeah. This is a funny one. Um, who did you play against that you thought may have been a little bit overrated? Play against? Yeah. In the comments section, they're saying Murtasaka. They said you had a field day against him. <laughs> uh, that was overrated? Yeah, that you thought going into the game, yeah, this is going to be a tough challenge, but then you just... Ran riot. You know what? I'll probably say um, Gary Neville. I'm gonna say. Yeah. Yeah, because like whenever I played against United, I always targeted his side of the pitch on purpose. So basically, because <laughs> Rio was so good, I'd always like come over a bit more to Neville. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that defense, I was like, you know what? Neville's the one that I'm gonna try and like pick on, and he could never handle yeah. that. That stop and turn, <laughs> and I let go on the page. I mean, like he couldn't handle it, so I'd say like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully he sees it. I think. One of the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the things he said is he hated playing against some bad pace. So, no, good answer. Listen, man. Hey, right, I've appreciated you joining me. Uh, yeah, it's no... been good talking to you. Any yeah. final messages or anything you want to pass on? Um, not really. No, just I think like. Sometimes people don't know what's really going on behind the scenes. Do you know what I mean? Which, obviously, when the papers bring out stories, I don't want to put the the little details in. Do you know what I mean? I want to just make the headline. So, yeah. hopefully, I'll put a few things straight. Nah, that's weird, yeah, man. That's Listen, it. man, appreciate you for your time, as always. It's been good talking, man. Yeah. All right, bro. Cool, All man. Right, man. I'll catch you in a bit, man. Bless, man. Well, that's that then. Listen, that was good, man. Good conversation, good talking points. Um, we'll be back soon. Peace out.